Hi, it's Tracy Schultz. I'm here doing a video for the Fairy Stamper design team. And I'm going to be creating an inky ink smushed background for my fairy. Now this is a technique that I learned from Tracy Fear, who is also a member of the Fairy Stamper design team. I started out by ink smooshing several colors of ink from Catherine Puller, and they were the very light pastel colors from Spring Fling, but they were a little bit too light. So then I switched over to something a little bit more vibrant. I grabbed Life of the Party, and I started with some Aquatini, some Lime Ricky, and then I also grabbed my Carnival collection, and I grabbed some uh, Blue Suede Shoes later. I also had the Date Night collection, and I used some um, Serenade, I used Cumberbund, of course, my favorite color. Um, it's a beautiful teal color, and I like the way this is looking. So you see, I've got this watercolor cardstock. It's just a generic, no-name brand of watercolor cardstock, and I'm liking the purples and the greens. Uh, I used a little bit of In the Park. Basically use what you have and just keep going back at it. I kept grabbing my inks and if I was looking for more intense purple like right now, I would go ahead in with some purple. I would also dry the panel so that I could go in for more colors. But the idea with this project is to have what is called a vignette where the middle of the card is lighter than the outside of the card and with the middle of the card being a lighter color if the fairy is stamped there it kind of pops you know right off the page so that's what i'm trying to accomplish here it seems like i'm having trouble building up color so i think when and i dried it um, and then i grabbed those more vibrant colors uh, lime ricky aquatini and um, all that jazz and you can see those are definitely more vibrant. Now remember I dried my panel, so I'm getting a nice, nice layer of color there. I took my Distress sprayer and sprayed the middle and used my paper towel and I'm trying to then basically lift some of this ink because Catherine Puller inks are water reactive and so they are gonna fade back a little bit if you, if you spray water on them. And I just keep spraying and dabbing until the center of my card is lighter than the outside of my card. And I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I dried it. I grabbed another color, uh, something borrowed. And I'm just getting the edges. So I'm trying very hard not to dip into the middle section. I'm trying not to dip the middle section of my panel trying just to dip the edges. And again, I learned this technique from Tracy Fear. If you're not familiar with her, she's on YouTube and her channel is called Not Afraid of Color. You definitely wanna check her out. She's, um, like I said, on the Fairy Stamper Design Team with me and she's super talented and just makes some amazing fairy cards. Uh, so go in and dry that again. You have to kind of reshape it as you're drying it because it wants to buckle. Now we've got uh, Mardi Gras, I think. Um, basically vibrant colors, trying to get those edges so that they have a deeper saturation of the hue. And it's, it's it takes time, guys. It's not something that you can just sit down and like two minutes later you're done like when you ink blend it's not that same you just really have to keep working that panel keep drying it and um look at that i ran out of water i had to add some water and that looked like it was something borrowed actually the color something borrowed and i really like the way this looks on the edge and um, my color scheme that i'm going for is like blue and teal and maybe just with a hint of purple I have a mat, it's a craft mat that I'm using on top of my, my normal craft mat. 
You can use a glass media mat if you have one. That's perfectly fine. Um, I just had my self-healing mat out already. So I figured I would just grab this craft mat. That's definitely blue suede shoes. I mean, suede shoes. You can see how nice and deep of a blue that is. And when I do this, I get a really nice saturation. I've got contrast going on from the green to the blue. And this is exactly what I was hoping for. And yes, your fingers will get very inky. So if you are opposed to that, you might want to wear a pair of rubber gloves. I just make sure that when I'm done, I go wash the dishes or something that my hands are kind of soaking in water for a little bit. That way I can get at least some of that ink off. And now it's dye-based ink. So um, now I'm just taking my distress sprayer and just flicking some water so that it has like spots. My spots didn't come up very well, but at least it did lighten things a little bit and, you know, just give it that like texture look. Um, still spraying in the middle and letting that water run to the edges. That's kind of helping it get a little bit of, um, so it's not all solid color. I'm pretty much done with this panel at this point I now need to just add some accents so I've got flirty fuchsia and I've got this sponge it's a sea um, sponge it's one of those really like hard sponges that you you know I guess it comes from the ocean I'm not really sure but it um, it's got a nice firm edge to it so I, I dipped it in the flirty fuchsia and then I rotated it and got another edge and I dipped it in the Tiki Torch. And now I'm going back in with the Flirty Fuchsia. So my fairy is going to be sort of like in the heavens, like with stars. So I figured I better put some variety around the edges so it looks like stars. And I am going to use a stamp from Fairy Hugs that is stars as well. But this little sponge just totally helped, I think, the whole panel. I think it really brings it all together. Now I'm just cleaning up my mess. Oh, I'm grabbing some of the um, water um, ink here. And I have a paintbrush. And it's one of those uh, st stiff brushes. And I'm just dabbing the brush all over the panel just to get the effect of um, some smaller areas of color. And of course it's water reactive. So if you spray it with water, it's going to give it a softer look. So it's not so harsh looking. Okay. Now we're going to have to trim this down so that it fits on an A2 card base. Give it a nice good drying, of course. Um, so I do trim some of the edges once it's dry and that works out fine because it still has a lot of nice um, colors on the edges and everything still. I didn't cut too much off. So now I grab the something, oh, it's a boy. This is called It's a Boy Ink by Katherine Puller. And I've got my blending brush and I'm just blending around the frame. So I'm making sure that those edges have a solid frame, basically. You can pick any color you'd like. I just went in with a light blue. Now it's time to stamp our fairy onto this panel. All right, this is called Starla, and Stardust is the other stamp that I'm going to be using. But for Starla, I am going to situate her in the middle of that vignette so that she's kind of got the glow behind her. And I'm using Versafine Claire Nocturne ink, which is a nice black pigment ink. I uh, highly recommend it when you're stamping silhouettes such as this. Don't you just love our fairy and the way she's just flying through the sky with her little wand with the little star on the top? So yeah, I named this card Starla, 
is sprinkling stardust. And you'll see why in a minute when I'm done stamping her, I clean her off and put her back away in her package. And then I grab the stardust stamp and arrange it so that it looks as if the star dust is coming out of her wand. Isn't that cool? It's just a perfect match. And I am stamping off of the image, so that's okay. If you uh, take it and rotate it different ways, stamping a little bit off of the panel, it's okay to do that. It actually looks pretty good that way. I just had an extra piece of tape there just to keep things steady. And I'm just using that same VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink all the way around. I thought about using some metallic inks, but I didn't think they would show up as well because the panel is very vibrant and has a lot of rich hues. I didn't think anything metallic really would show up very well. And I just take this nice stamp and just rotate it around the frame. I'm twisting it and turning it so that it's in a different position. Really, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm just lining it up where it looks to fit. I am going to put a sentiment over her head, so I don't want to put the stars there. But I do want to add some up here in the top right hand corner so that it's like it's coming off of her wand. And then I add a little bit there in the left corner just to balance that out. But it definitely is taking shape and I'm super pleased with the way it turns out. If you're interested in this gorgeous fairy stamp, you can go to Fairy Stamper website. They have this and many, many more um, that they design under the Fairy Hugs line. This is a piece of watercolor panel that I had in my like scraps, and it's got that real pretty purple watercolor. So I used black embossing powder. I mean, I used black ink, the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, and clear embossing powder. It says, there is magic about you that is your own. That is all your own. This is the Deckel Trimmer from Tim Holtz. I highly recommend it because it is fantastic for trimming sentiments and giving them a little bit of interest so that they're just not flat, straight sentiments. They've got a little bit of a deckled edge. And it's not real sharp or anything. The way it looks, you can run your finger across it. It's not real sharp. I've got this pretty piece of this royal blue foil in my scraps and I thought I would mount the sentiment on top of that blue foil cardstock just to give it a little bit of like so that it just pops a little bit when you're looking at the card that your eye will be drawn to that. Here's that gorgeous blue foil. I'm going to be cutting a card panel. Uh, for a mat for behind my panel actually yeah I'm going to cut this down to um actually I cut this down to five and a half by four and a quarter and then I adhered it to a card base so it's it's covering that whole thing but doesn't that look beautiful oh my gosh I just think the colors are so rich and so vibrant and just the saturation with those inks. I'm very, very pleased. So I've got this navy blue card base and I'm just going to go ahead and lay the um, panel, this watercolor panel down and adhere that to the uh, card base. Nothing fancy here, but it does cover pretty much the entire front. And then for our sentiment, I'm going to put that up in the top left hand corner and I could put it on there without the blue foil mat, but I just think that blue foil mat just ties everything together so nicely. So I do end up using it. I'm going to be gluing this down 
and I'm using glue as opposed to my tape runner because it gives me a little bit of time to wiggle it and get it straight since it is a very tight space up above her head here. I don't have a lot of margin for error. And then I grab a little stick thingy just to pick up the excess glue that was kind of seeping out. So that's my card. I'm going to have some still photos for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching today and please check out the Fairy Stamper website so that you can check into getting some of these adorable fairy stamps. I'm so glad that you tuned in today and I can't wait to do a video again for you next Saturday. Have a hopeful day. Bye-bye.